The reason we're all talking about AI today is simply because of two major trends that have occurred. Neural networks were largely invented in the early 1980s at Stanford University and at MIT, where people were trying to do image recognition in, for example, nuclear accelerators and things like that. The problem was to estimate neural networks required a lot of computing power. So in the late 80s and early 90s, people talked about parallel processing, using mini CPUs, mini servers, to actually estimate neural network models. And that's where this generative large language model idea kind of was on hold until something happened. Video gamers playing games like Grand Theft Auto or others wanted to have very high resolution graphics. They didn't want to have that anti-aliasing problem where the edges of objects were pixelated. In order to make a smooth service on a rendered image, you need graphics processing units, GPUs, right? And those GPUs were very expensive, very expensive. And so typical hardcore gamers would buy rigs, a tower with one graphics card that would be very expensive. Well, in the era of Bitcoin, a lot of Bitcoin miners realized that to resolve the mathematics involved in a ledger, you could use graphics cards that were used for good quality graphics in games to actually resolve mathematical problems that were useful for Bitcoin miners. NVIDIA and others realized a software layer like CUDA, C-U-D-A, could be used to access graphics cards to do massive mathematical calculations. People in the field of AI realized that those calculations done at that speed allowed people to estimate neural networks that, of a complex nature. In essence, someone with a $4,000 machine built from spare parts purchased from eBay could actually be estimating neural networks, which could only be done by major mainframe computers and supercomputers a decade ago. So now anyone with a small budget could actually estimate uh, neural networks or deep learning models. That exploded the field because now people who could not do forecasting using neural networks, who could not do modeling with neural networks, now had an opportunity to enter at a very low price point on a hardware side. The second thing is R and Python, software that was used to estimate the parameters of models were very expensive. Then academics started creating open source software called R. R could do many statistical properties. Python was launched as well, also public domain. Because the software is public domain and the hardware is cheap, the confluence of those two allow anyone to enter this field at a very low price point, including small enterprises, medium, and of course the large enterprises who are now caught off guard with how easy it is to get into this game. Some models, however, still require a lot of graphics cards, 4,000, like large language model. So some areas are still reserved for people with a large budget. However, that's probably gonna disappear in the next year or two as well.